أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقالوا لولا أنزل عليه ملك ولو أنزلنا ملكا لقضي الأمر ثم لا ينظرون ولو جعلناه ملكا لجعلناه رجلا ولنبسنا عليهم ما يلبسون ولقد استهزي برسل من قبلك فحاق بالذين سخروا منهم ما كانوا به يستهزئون صدق الله العظيم As I told you, a very important issue that is discussed in the beginning of Surah Al-Alam was that the kuffar of Quraysh at Mecca, especially their chiefs, they were demanding from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a visible sign, a visible miracle. Not that they wanted actually to see the miracle and then they would believe in him. But they were using it as an argument against him to impress upon the common people what we call the silent majority, to impress upon them that these people are sincere. They are asking for something which is logical. If someone is claiming to be a messenger of Allah, well, it's not much for, for him to ask, you know, from him to ask that he should show a miracle. when all the messengers of Allah have been showing miracles. But the decision on the other side from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was that we are not going to show them any visible miracle. So it was a very difficult situation in which Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was placed. Maybe there some of the Muslims also were thinking, well, there's no harm if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows a miracle. Maybe some of them, you know, After all, maybe they come to believe. Or even if they don't come to believe, at least they will have to shut up. Their argument will be finished. And maybe, please note, that such an idea might have come to the mind of Muhammad Wasallam himself also. That is why we will be reading some of the most hard admonitions to the Prophet Wasallam in this surah. وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ مَلَكُ And they say, why has not an angel been sent to him, sent down on him? If we had seen an angel coming from above, bringing a book to Muhammad, we would have believed. لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا مَلَكًا لَقُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ سُمَّ لَا يُنزَرُونَ Had we sent down an angel, then you know the matter would have been decided. And then no more concession, no more respite will be given to them. Because we know, basic philosophy of life, this worldly life is, that it is for the testing, a period of testing. If everything comes before your eyes, if you can see Allah, if you can see the heaven, if you can see the, the hell, Then you know the, the testing goes. It is that you have to believe in these things, to see these things with the intellect, with the heart. While you are in ghaib, Allah yuminuna bil ghaib. So that is the testing. If everything of the unseen comes before your eyes, then you know this, the question of testing goes away. So if an angel is sent, then no more respite. Then actually, on the day of judgment, the angels will come before our eyes. But then there will be no respite for anybody to do any good deed. And if we had sent an angel as a messenger, 
Rajalnahu Rajalan. We would have made him also a man. Because we have made, we have sent these messengers to, for, for the humanity and to test them. So even if we had decided to send down an angel as a messenger, we would have turned him into a man. And we would have covered upon them what is what they are, they are covering now. Yeah? Because they have to believe the unseen. That this wahi, coming down of wahi, is not visible. Jibreel is coming to him, no doubt, but he is invisible. You can't see him. And if these things become visible, then you know it's no question of testing now. Now you know this is directed towards the Prophet ﷺ. Oh Muhammad ﷺ, you are not the first who is being mocked at. All our messengers were being mocked at. People were scoffing them. They were scoffed and mocked all the messengers in public who came before you. But in the end, what they were mocking at, what they were scoffing at, those things came and surrounded them. Haqa yahiko means to surround them. This is the point that I raised, you know, when it was, it came in the press that the wife of Imran Khan is to be named Haqa. This Haqa, you know, it is from Haqa yahiko. In Quran, it has appeared only for punishment and chastisement and, you know, azab. Haqa bil lazina kafar usakhiru minhum. Whatever they were laughing at, whatever they were mocking at, those things came to them and they were surrounded by them, encompassed by them. Tell them, O Muhammad, go round about in the land. And then see if with your eyes what happened, what was the result, what was the End of the beliers who rejected the faith. What happened to the nation of Ad, the people of Ad, the people of Hud? What happened to Samud, the people of Saleh? Alayhim as-salatu as-salam. Qul man maafi samawati wa l-ard. As I told you, the argument here, and that is about the basic tenets of Islam, Iman, Tawheed. Because now, who are being addressed are the idolaters, are the associators, are the mushrikeen of Bakka, in the Bakki surahs. All the argument going on in, in, in the Madani surahs we have been reading, that is with the people of the book. They believe in Allah. At least they profess that we believe in one Allah, especially the Jews. They believe in Allah, monotheism, they claim. But here, you know, the people at Bakka, they were idolaters, polytheists, who believed in so many gods and goddesses, who were praying to them, who had carved out, you know, the idols. But even they believed that everything in this universe belongs to Allah. And everything in the universe has been created by Allah. At that level, they were also monotheists. Only what they believed was that there are certain smaller gods also and goddesses also. And this is actually the shirk everywhere in the world. Mahadeo in India had been one. Devi, Devta, innumerable. God with capital G, one. Omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. These were the attributes. In Greece also, and Rome also, one God. But gods and goddesses, innumerable. In this same way, Allah, one. وَلَا إِنْ سَعَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَا يَقُولُنَ اللَّهِ If you ask them, who created the heavens and the earth, they will say, immediately, Allah, Allah created. They didn't believe that there are two gods who have created this universe. No. Creator is one. And here the question, you know, Ask them, 
to whom belong all the things which are in the heavens and in the earth. Qullillah. And say yourself, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to Allah belongs everything. Kataba ala nafsi rahmah. He has prescribed upon himself, made imperative upon himself mercy. But what is the result of that mercy? What is the manifestation of that mercy? لَا يَجْمَعَنَّكُمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا رَعْبَ فِي This is the biggest manifestation of his mercy that he will definitely gather you on the day of resurrection. Why? People who are being wronged here, people who are being oppressed here, people who are exploited, people on whom others rule, they are ruled, well, they will be compensated on the day of the judgment. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If somebody is living, you know, by moral laws, he is the loser. They might have to go hungry. If one decides, I won't earn anything from haram means, maybe he has to go hungry. If there is no resurrection, and they don't get any reward for it, it is injustice. It is cruelty to them. That is why it's out of mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned to himself that he must resurrect you, he must gather you, he must reward you. Note the words. Kataba ala nafsi rahma la yajmannakum ila yawm al-qiyamati la rayba fi. He will definitely gather you on the day of judgment, about which there is no doubt. And the zina khasiru al fuzaw fa'um la yubinu. But those who have decided to keep in loss, to destroy their own selves, then they are not going to believe. They are not going to accept it. Why? Because they know they are the evildoers. They are the exploiters. They are the oppressors. Now they don't want to accept that there will be resurrection because they will be punished. Those who are wronged, Resurrection is going to be a mercy for them. And for the evildoers, it is going to be a punishment for them. They won't accept. They won't believe that there is going to be a resurrection. In the preceding ayah it was, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَلَّمَنْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ You know, space, time and space. Mafis samavati wa lard, it encompasses all the space, all existence, the heavens and the earth. Now the other dimension, time. Wa lahu ma sakana fil layle wa nahar. And to him belongs whatever rests during the night and the day. So time and space, both the dimensions covered. Wa huwa samiul alim, and he is the all listener, all hearer. All knower. Qul la ghayr Allah ya taqidu waliyan fatiri samawati wal ard. Ask them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you advise me to take as protector anyone else except Allah? Who is the creator of the heavens and the earth? When you also admit that he is the creator of the heavens and the earth, why not take him as your protector? Why not be friends to him? Why to befriend the smaller gods, even if they exist? What's the logic in it? Even if the smaller gods are there, why shouldn't I have a relationship with the, the chief god? And he feeds all the creatures. وَلَا He is not fed by anyone. قُلْ إِنِّي أُمِرْتُ وَنَكُونَ أَوَّلَ مَنْ أَسْلَمْ Proclaim, O Muhammad, I have been commanded to be the first of those who submit to his will. وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And should never be from among the idolaters or the associators, whosoever associate with him anything 
اور اینی ون ایز ایکول اور پارٹنر کولنی اخاف ربی عذاب یومن عظیم پروکلیم ٹو دیم ایون آئی فیئر دی پنشمنٹ آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی اف آئی ڈس اوبے مائی لارڈ دی ڈیوائن لا از امیوٹیبل اٹ ڈونٹ اٹ ڈزن چینج فرام مین ٹو مین ایون مائی سیلف آل دو آئی ایم از میسنجر آئی ایم از چوزن ون آئی ایم از بلوڈ بٹ ایون اف آئی ڈس اوبے ہم آئی ول بی براٹ ٹو دی بک Only a half in a say to Rabbi, if I disobey my Lord, even myself, I fear Azab Yomin, Azab Yomin Azim, the chastisement and the punishment of the grand day, of the big day, mighty day. May Yusuf Anhu Yomin Fakad Rahimahu. From whosoever that punishment is averted on that. They, it will be out of mercy from him. Man yusraf an yom aizin fakad rahim an. Whosoever is saved from that torment, actually he is saved by virtue of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a hadith, you know, the Prophet said once, nobody will be able to enter paradise by dint of his deeds only. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon him. And some of the companions, he took the courage to ask him directly, Even you, O messenger of Allah? When the statement of the messenger was categorical, nobody can enter paradise. By dint of his deeds only. Unless Allah has mercy on him. Even you, O Messenger of Allah said, yes, even me. I need the mercy of Allah. So here it is. قُلِ لِيَا خَافُ إِنَا سَيْتُ رَبِّي عَذَابَ يَوْمِ نَذِيمِ مَنْ يُسْرَفْ عَنُوا يَوْمَ يَدِمْ فَقَدْ رَحِمَا وَذَلِكَ الْفَاضُ الْمُبِينَ And this is a clear and manifest time for success. وَيَمْ صَدْقَ اللَّهُ بِدُونِنُ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّهُ And if Allah touches you with something which is painful, unpleasant, then nobody can remove it from you except Him. And if He touches you with something good, pleasant, something welcome, then He is powerful over everything. Now this is all Tawheed, all attributes of Allah, Sifatullah. آمنتو باللہ کبھا ہوا بے اسمائی ہی و صفات ہی So these attributes of Allah وہو القاہر فوق عباد ہی And he is irresistibly omnipotent قاہر Nobody can resist him Nobody can challenge him Irresistible Omnipotent وہو القاہر فوق عباد ہی He has full control over his servants. وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ And he is all wise, all aware. قُلْ أَيُّ شَعِينَ أَكْبَرُ شَهَادَةِ Ask them. Who is highest in witnessing and testifying? Whose testimony is highest and most important and supreme? قُلِ اللَّهِ Tell them. Allah. Allah's testimony. It's the highest, the supreme. Shaheedun baini wa bainakum. And he is a witness between you and me. That I am his messenger. He testifies to it. Wa uhiya ilayya hadha al-Quran. Very important ayah. And this Quran has been revealed to me. Uhiya ilayya hadha al-Quran. Li unzirakum bihi wa man balaw. So that I should warn you with it. Bihi is very important here. The emphasis is it. You have to warn through Quran. Give the glad tidings through Quran. Call the people towards Allah through Quran. Remind them of Allah through Quran. 
فذکر بال قرآن میں یہ خواب ہوا فائنما یا سبنا ہو بے لسان کا لے تو بشرا بے ہل متقین و تن زیرا بے ہی کامن لدا اف وی آر سوئنگ سرمن اسپریڈ اور آورس بٹ وی آر ناٹ کوٹنگ قرآن وی آر ناٹ نریٹنگ قرآن وی آر ناٹ ریسائٹنگ قرآن دس از ناٹ دی وے دیٹ دی پروفٹ یوز ٹو پریچ اور دی پروفٹ یوز ٹو کال پیپل تھرو قرآن تبشیر بال قرآن گریٹ ٹائڈنگس بال قرآن You read out the ayat of Quran and there are the glad tidings for the people who take to the right path. You read out and recite unto people the ayat of Quran and it contains all the warning. You recite these ayat and it contains all the wisdom. And they are, each word of it is an ayah. It is a sign of Allah's knowledge, a sign of Allah's wisdom. So, dawah. Real dawah in Islam is the only one, the vehicle of which and the instrument of which is Quran and Quran only. Not the stories, fables, in which there is, you know, so much thing, the exaggerations, without any authority, weak ahadis, unauthentic ahadis and riwayat. saying sermons through them actually is deviating from the path of the muhammad of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam le unzara kum bihi this quran has revealed to me that i should warn you with this wa man balagh and whomsoever it reaches whomsoever quran reaches actually the message of the prophethood of muhammad has reached him sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is not preaching now himself But this all preaching that any servant of Allah is doing is on his behalf. And to whomsoever this Quran has been conveyed, the message of the messengerhood of Muhammad has been conveyed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is as if by proxy. And it was, it was happening even in the days of the uh, Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, himself. When Abu Bakr... He, you know, believed. Now he went out to preach and convey the message to others. Now you know, six of the ten of the topmost Sahaba, Ashara Mubashara, to them Islam was conveyed by Abu Bakr. And they embraced Islam at the dawah and at the persuasion of Abu Bakr. Usman to start with, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, Sayyid ibn Zayd, Talha, Zubair, the people, they were, belong, they were belonging to the most respectable houses of Quraysh. And because Abu Bakr was also one of the most respected persons, he held a position in the hierarchy of Quraysh. So he could convey the message to those people. Qul lima, قُلْ اَيُّ شَعِينَ اَكْبَرُ شَحَادَةً قُلِ اللَّهِ شَحِيدٌ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَأُوْهِيَ إِلَى هَادُ الْقُرْآنِ لِيُنزِلَكُمْ بِهِ وَمَنْ بَلَقْ اَيْنَّكُمْ لَتَشْحَدُونَ أَنَّ مَعَ اللَّهِ عَلَيَةً اُخْرَى Do you really testify that there are other gods besides Allah? Now this you know, as I used the words before, a searching question with penetrating eyes. Do you really? Because from the depths of the heart, They didn't believe it. A manifestation was, it will come later. Whenever there was some calamity, whenever their lives were in danger, they always called Allah. Never called Laat or Uzza or Manat or Hobal. What does it mean? In the depths of their hearts, they actually believed that if anyone can remove this calamity from us, he say, only Allah. Not Laat, not Uzza, not Manat, not Hubal, nothing of this heart. So penetrating, seeing them into their eyes. Do you really believe? Do you really testify? Aynakum latashadun anna ma Allah hai alayat al-ukhra. That besides Allah there are other gods. Allah ashad. Proclaim, O Muhammad. I can't testify. Even, you know, if you take the courage of saying... What your hearts are not saying, 
but you are saying i will not say it qul inma huwa ilahu wahid proclaim that he is the only one god wa innani bari'un mimma tushrikun and i declare and proclaim my disapproval of the association that you are making with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the shirk that you are making allazina atainahum alkitab ya'rifunahu kama ya'rifuna abnahum the people to whom we gave the book they recognize muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as they recognize their sons this testimony has appeared in the quran many a times even in surah al baqara beginning of the second part ya'rifunahu kama ya'rifuna abnahu ya'rifuna annahu al haqq min rabbihim they know it but they won't accept الذين اتيناهم الكتاب يعرفونه كما يعرفون ابناءهم الذين خسروا انفسهم هم لا يؤمنون but those who have decided to destroy their own selves they have determined to go to hell well, they are not going to they are not going to believe in him ومن اظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا او كذب بايات and who can be more wrong wrong doer evil doer transgressor than a person who forges a lie against allah subhanahu wa taala or he belies the signs of allah subhanahu wa taala his revelations now there are two things they are equally bad equally evil if someone is not the messenger of allah and he says i am the messenger of allah can there be something more outrageous than this on the other side if someone is the messenger of allah you are accepting him, not accepting him these are equal crimes waman azlamu mimman iftara ala allah kadiban who attributes to allah a lie he has not chosen him as a messenger but he says i am the messenger and he is coming to me on the other hand aw kazzab bi ayatihi when the real signs are coming and they are belying it so they are two equal crimes innahu la yuflihu zalimun such transgressors and evil doers doers will not prosper wa yawma nahsharuhum jami'an thumma naqulu lil ladhina ashraku ay rasulakaakum al ladhina kuntum tazumun and just recall just imagine when we shall gather them together all of them the day of judgment they will be standing before us suma naqul al we shall say to them lil ladina ashraku to those people who had associated partners or equals with allah aina shurakaukum al ladina kuntum tazumun where are the associate gods your associate gods where are they about whom you were asserting there are smaller gods goddesses we pray to them we bow to them we prostrate before them and you know their belief was how la shufa'una indallah they will be intercessors for us with allah they will plead our case they will be advocates for us that means they believed in allah they believed that the final judgment and verdict will be given by allah only they are the intercessors how la shufa'una indallah na'buduhum li yuqarribuna ila allah zulfa we worship them so that they can take us nearer and nearer and nearer to allah the same thing that we say about the awliya allah what's the difference we praise them we bow before their graves we are you know circle ambulating around, around their graves what for we don't think they are allah no they are intercessors with allah they are the beloved of allah allah will accept the recommendation from them and through them they are the wasila through them we can reach allah while we have read the ayah in surah al maida what is wasila zaidu fi sabilillah you see na your deeds your actions
يوم نحشرهم جميعا ثم نقول للذين اشركوا اين شركاؤكم الذين كنتم تزعمون وير ار دوز يور اسوسييت جودز ثم لم تكن فتنتهم الا ان قالوا والله ربنا ما كنا مشركين Now there will be no contention with them except that they would say, "By God, by our Lord." Ilan kalu Allah hai Rabbi na, by you, by Allah, our Lord. Ma kul na mushrikin. We were not the associators. We were not associating them. We did never think that they are equal to you or partner with you. Unzur kaya fakazabu ala anfusehim. Wa bala anhum ma kalu yaftarun. Just imagine how they will be belying themselves in this world. They are doing this shirk. On the day of judgment, they will swear by Allah we were not doing it. But Allah and whom? And gone will be the wind. All those whom they had associated, Ma Kanu Yastarun, what they have concocted, they have forged. All things will go with the wind, vanish. Here they think that they will intercede, but there all will disappear. No lat, no uzza, no balat. We thought they will be interceding for us over here. We thought they will be advocates for us. No lat, no uzza, no balat. It was all iftira. It was all forgery. It was all concoction. It was all your creation of your imagination. It had no real existence. So it will, it will just vanish. It will just go with the wind. Women whom I just come here like, and there are among them who listen to you very attentively. Wajalna ala kulubim akin na tanayaf kahu, and we have put over their hearts coverings so that they cannot understand it. Rafi aganim vakra. And we have put heaviness in their ears. Implied are the words so that they can't listen. Why? Why? When you know all the ayat in La Yuminu Biha, and even if say all the signs and miracles that they are demanding, they are not going to believe. Hatta ida jau ka yujadilu na ka yakulu na dina kafaru ilha da illa saatiru lamwalin. So much so that when they come to you. They argue with you, and they say these unbelievers. All these are the fables of the ancients, the stories of the ancients, which you are narrating to you, to 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 us, of Joseph and and Dawood and Suleiman and and you know Ad and Samu. All these ancient stories, fables of the ancients, you are narrating to you. Now, what does it mean? I mean, whom my yastam will like? Because I, I told you. That you know, there was a hard time for these leaders of the Quraysh also, because they had to stop the masses, the common people, from accepting Islam. Now, how to do it? They wanted to pose before them that we are sincere people. We go to Muhammad and we listen to him attentively, but we find there is no essence in it. What he is, what he is saying. So they posed like that. They acted like it. It was a drama. I mean, whom yes, come here, like. But they are determined in their heart that we are not going to accept. And this determination, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is interpreting. We have put covers on their hearts, and we have put heaviness in their ears. They can't listen. They can't hear, and they can't understand. Because they only pose. They only show off to their common people. That we are not arrogant, we are not unreasonable. Well, we are very much reasonable, sincere. We want to hear. We go to him. We listen to him. But we find there is nothing in, in what he is saying. It is all, you know, the stories of the ancients. He had he had learned from somewhere, and you know, he wants to impress upon us that he is the messenger of Allah. Wabilu ma yastami ulaik. وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً يَفْقَهُوهُ وَفِي آذَانِهِمْ وَقْرَةً وَيَرَوْا كُلَّ آيَةٍ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِهَا Now this is again directed to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم as well as the Muslims who had thought sometimes maybe that if their demand is met, if some clear visible miracle is shown to them, what's the harm? 
مے بی سم آف دیم ایٹ لیسٹ دے ایکسیپٹ اسلام اور اف ایٹ لیسٹ دے ڈونٹ ایکسیپٹ اسلام دے ول ہیو ٹو شٹ اپ دین دے ول ہیو ٹو بی کوائٹ دے وونٹ بی ایبل ٹو آرگو اگینسٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اگینسٹ اسلام وی وانٹ اے میریکل ہی کلیمس ٹو بی اے مسجر آف اللہ اٹس ایبسولیوٹلی نیچرل لاجیکل وی ڈیمانڈ اے میریکل فرام ہم اینڈ ہی از ناٹ شوئنگ اٹ سو اللہ سیز وہیں یرو کل آیت اللہ یو بنو گیا او مسلمس او محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ٹیک اٹ فار گرانٹیڈ ایون اف آل دیئر ڈیمانڈس آر میٹ اینڈ آل دی میریکلس دے وانٹ ٹو سی آر شون ٹو دیم دے آر ناٹ گوئنگ ٹو بلیو حتا ادا جاؤ کا یجادلون کا یقول اللہ دین کفر ان حضا اللہ ساتھ اللہ ولین وہم ینہون عنہ ینعون عنہ نہا تو سٹاپ ادر تو فرمیڈ ادر ینہون عن المنکر نہا وہم ینہون عنہ they want to dissuade people from accepting the faith of Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم they are forbidding them and themselves are also holding back. So this is the double role. They also hold them back. They don't want to come forward and accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as messenger of Allah. And they want to stop their people also, their nation also, their men also. If they accept all of them, where will be their chieftainship? Their position will go. Where will their authority rest now? Just, you know, as the leaders. of the parties. They make it sure that our followers don't listen to anybody else. If they listen to other people, well, maybe they are convinced. If they leave us, what about our leadership? What about what are the position that we are occupying today? We are the leaders. So they will take all pains to stop people. Don't, don't read such and such books. Don't listen to them. Don't go to the, their meetings. Why? Because they don't want that any harm should come to their positions. وَهُمْ يَنْحَوْنَ عَنْهُ وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَنْهُ وَإِنْ يُولِكُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَمْ وَمَا يَشْرُونَ But they are not destroying but themselves. This is the Akhra. In this world, maybe they are very successful. And they have put Muhammad in a very difficult position, صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم. This was, the, this was the condition at that time. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put in a very difficult position. People are saying, because there is an incident which happened, one of the cousins of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was up till that time, you know, he was with the Prophet, although he did not formally accept Islam, but he supported him like Abu Talib. But when, you know, the Quraysh chieftains, they assembled and they decided we must ask this, you know, from Muhammad. Demand from him, show us a miracle. There was a meeting. They called Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They put the demands. We will find those demands in Surah Tumani Israel. لَنْدُو مِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى تَفْجُرَ لَنَا مِنَ الْأَرْضَ يَنْبُوعَ او تکون لکا جنت من نخیل وعنب فتفجر انہارا خلالہ تفجیرہ او تسکت السماء کما ازامت علینا کسفا او تاکیہ باللہ والملائکت قبیلہ او یکون لکا بیت من زخوف او ترقاف السماء اس ہیرز آف دیمانڈ یو شو اس دیس یو شو اس دیس ایس یو کن شو اس وی شل ایکسپٹ یو وی آر ریڈی ٹو ایکسپٹ بٹ فیل محمد صد ویل آئی کانٹ Accede to your demand. It's up to Allah. If He wants, He can show the miracle. It's not in my power that I can show you this miracle. So when the Prophet was coming back from that meeting, that cousin of his said, Look, Muhammad, till today I was with you. I was supporting you. But now your nation, they have put on you the burden of argument. So this, this incident I have narrated, Imam Razi has narrated the whole incident in his tafsir. Muhammad sallallahu became very sad. And that is, you know, but what I was denoting, he was between the two stones of a grinder. On the one hand, a demand, and even the common people, they also think that this demand is absolutely valid. 
on the other hand, Allah's decision. No miracle will be shown. The hardship was for Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Well, out there is a kifu al nar, and only if you could see when they will be made to stand in front of the fire on the day of judgment. Alu ya laytana. Then they will say, Oh, would that nuradda that we are returned back to the earth, to our to the world. Well, I know because the Bible says that the world then we shall not be lied the signs of our Lord, because now they will have, they will see the with their own eyes the fire of hell. But the cool of the Mormonian and we shall become you know believers. Bal bada lahum ma kanu yufula min qabl. Actually, it will become apparent for them what they were hiding in their hearts. Now, this is, you know, in their hearts they also knew that whatever Muhammad is saying is correct. I told you what is kufr to hide something, to cover it with something, to suppress the truth. Something within you says, oh, whatever he is saying, it is correct, and it happens to most of us when there is an argument between me and you. And at the, at the height of the argument, you know, I feel well. What is he saying is correct, but how can I admit? It means I have lost. He has gained. He is victorious. He will dominate me. And then you say, I said no, no. My heart is saying yes. My tongue would be saying no. So actually, whatever Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was preaching, their hearts, their souls, they were saying yes to it. But they were hiding it, suppressing it. No, what will it mean? He will be above us then. We will have to follow him then. But about our positions, but about you know our all interests, vested interests, they will all go. But badalahu ma kano yufuna min kabul, walaurudu laadu lemanu huwan. And if they are returned back to the, the world. They will do the same which what they were doing, you know. My name is La Kaze Boon, and they are. They will be telling a lie. Wa kalu in hila illa hayatun al dunya wa man ahnu bi mabrusin, and they say there is no life except this life of ours of this world, and we are not going to be resurrected. So there were also all types of people, people believing in resurrection. But with the resurrection, that there will be intercessors, these gods, they will help us, and they will save us from the punishment of Allah. But there were people also who didn't accept this idea of resurrection. They said, "No, no, impossible. When our bodies will decay, our bones will decay. How is it possible? Our abad al abwalun. Do you say that our forefathers will also be resurrected? Aita." This is not going to happen. Hey, hata, hey, hata. Le matu adun. Wa kalu inhi illa hayatun al dunya. Wa ma nahnu bi mabusin. Wa lau taraiz wa kifu ala rabbihin. And only if you could see when they will be made to stand before their Lord. Kala leisa haga bil haq. Allah will ask, Is it not the truth? You were denying no resurrection. Is the resurrection not come to true? Kalu bala wa rabbena. They will have to reply, why not? Indeed, by you, O oh, our Lord, wa rabbena. By you, we swear by you that this has come to be true. Kala fazukul azab abi ma kun tum tak furun. Then Allah will say, now taste the chastisement and punishment. With, with with what you were belying, with what you were denying. Qad khasir al ladin, qad khasir al ladin al kazabu bil qaillah. Definitely, those have put them in in loss, put themselves in loss, who are denying the meeting with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We are not going to meet Him. Hatta izajat musaa, so that. When that appointed hour comes to them, now the sa, two sa's, just as I told you, two ajals. 
ajal personal ajal death and the whole world that is qiyamah the hour for me and you the death it is also an appointed hour and the prophet has been reported to have said man mata faqat qamat qiyamatuhu who dies his qiyamah has happened and then the the hour the appointed hour that is of the doomsday hatta idha jaat hum saat waqtatan and it will come at once suddenly qalu ya hasratana ala ma farratna fiha they will say alas for us we be little lit we neglected it wa hum yahmilun awzarahum ala zuhurihim and they will be carrying their burdens on their backs burdens of sins ala sa ma yazrun listen be aware it will be a very bad burden that they will be carrying on their backs wa man hayatu dunya illa laibu wa la you say this is only life اور اللہ سے مل حیات دنیا اللہ لہو و لائب دس لائف آف دس ورلڈ از نتھنگ بٹ اے پلے اینڈ این امیوزمنٹ ایز کمپیئر ٹو دی لائف آف ہیئر آفٹر دیٹ از اٹرنل دس از لمیٹڈ تھرٹی ایئر فورٹی ففٹی سکسٹی سیونٹی ایٹی وے بی ون ان ریچنگ ہنڈریڈ دیٹس آل فنشڈ and that life is real this life is like the drama of 3 hours somebody is acting as a king the other one as a servant this is a drama after 3 hours the king ceases to be king and the servant ceases to be servant they put off the robes both are the actors nothing else in this same in this world somebody high somebody low some rich some poor But you know death the leveler when death will come all will be buried in the clay the bodies will decay and become a part and parcel of the clay where from they had come originally wamal hayatu dunya ila laibu wa la wal daru al akhiratu khairu lil ladina yattaquna fala taakhilun and the house of the hereafter is much better for those who have taqwa so don't you understand don't you use your intellect fala taqilun qad na'lamu innahu la yahzuluk allazi yaqulun now these are three ayat very hard admonishment to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam very hard Just imagine, keep in your mind, you know, the difficult position in which the Prophet was. Between the two stones of a crusher. Qad na'lamu. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We very well know. Innahu la yahzuluk allazi yaqooloon. That you are being hurt and grieved at what they are saying. Don't think we are unaware of it. We know that you are in a very difficult position. We appreciate it. Qad na'lamu annaka an innahu la yahzuruk alladhi yaqulun. And there's another ayah in Surah Al-Hijr. Wa laqad na'lamu annahu yaziqu sadruka bima yaqulun. Your chest shrinks on what they are saying. Due to grief and sorrow. Qad na'lamu innahu la yahzuruk alladhi yaqulun. We very well know that you are grieved and hurt by what they are saying. فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ But think, look, they are not saying you to be a liar. None of them says you are, you are telling a lie. Nobody has ever charged you that you are a liar. وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ These evildoers are denying the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say you are not the prophet of Allah. They are repudiating the wahi that is coming to them. This wahi doesn't belong to you. This belongs to us. We have sent down. So they are offending us. 
Personally, they are not against you. Just imagine. What an intelligent point. إِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكُ وَلَكِنَّ ظَالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْهَدُونَ وَلَقَدْ قُزِّبَتْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ قَبْلِكُ And this is not happening to you for the first time in history. Before you also the messengers were belied. فَسَبَرُوا They endured patiently. عَلَى مَا قُزِّبُوا وَأُوزُوا And what they were belied, repudiated, and tortured and persecuted. Hatta atahum nasrona. Till the time that the, our help came to them. Wala mubadjala li kalimati Allah. There can be no changing of the laws of Allah. These are the laws. Wala ka jaka bin nabail mursaleen. And to you, the news of the earlier messengers have already come. I told you, this surah is, has, was revealed in the last year of the stay of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Makkah. So nearly two-thirds of the Quran had already been revealed before this, in which all these stories, you know, are what happened to Moses, what happened to Jesus, what happened to Nuh, what happened to Lut and, and who and Saleh, it has come to you. To whosoever, to whomsoever we sent a messenger, they rejected him. This is the ayah. I actually tremble at translating it. And if their aversion and their turning their faces away from you, it, if it is becoming very hard, unbearably hard on you, then if you have power, to have a tunnel in the earth, or ladder into the sky, to bring some ayah for them if you want. We are not going to send. If you can't bear it, if this has come, become unbearable for you, then if you have power, that you dig a tunnel in the earth, or you have a ladder in the sky, or Sulaman Fissama, Fatati Ahubiyah. Then you bring some ayah from anywhere you like. Wallahu sha Allahu la jala jamahum ala al-huda. And had Allah wanted so, He could have gathered all them on guidance in no time. He is all powerful. As the Prophet said, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the hearts of all human beings are within the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa taala. He can turn them, turn them which way He likes. He could turn all the people, first class moments, in one moment. فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ So be advised, don't be from among the ignorant ones. And these are the words said to the Prophet ﷺ. الرَّبُّ رَبٌّ وَإِن تَنَزَّلْ وَالْعَبْدُ عَبْدٌ وَإِن تَنَقَّى Rabb is Rabb, Lord is Lord, although he might have descended to the lowest heaven. And the servant remains a servant, although he ascended to the seventh heaven. Even there he was Abd. The difference between the Creator and the Created, the Lord and the Servant remains. We saw how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address, He will address Hazrat Masih on the Day of Judgment. And the way Allah is addressing Allah. وَإِن كَانَ كَبُرُ عَلَيْكَ عِرَادُهُمْ فَإِنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ أَنْ تَبْتَغِيَ دَفَقًا فِي اللَّهُ دِيَوْ سُلَّمًا فِي السَّمَاءِ فَتَعْتِيَهُمْ بِيَعَيَا وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَمَعْهُمْ عَلَى الْهُدَى فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ 
surely those who listen they will respond they will accept wal mauta but they are dead abu jahad is dead spiritually dead his spirit has ceased to exist you can't make him hear wal mauta jab asuhum allah thumma ilayhi turja'un allah will resurrect them these dead and then you know they will be returned to him wa qalu laula nuzila alayhi ayatun mir rabbi now repeating the demand and they say why on him the signs of allah the miracles have not been sent qul inna allah qadirun ala ay yunzila ayatan tell them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful he can send any sign any miracle that you demand walakin aksaruhum la ya'lamun but the most of them don't know what will be the consequences if we show such a miracle then there will be no respite for them just as we found when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said well okay ya isa inni munazzuluha alaykum you have asked for a table to descend from the heaven i will make it descend but now if after that any one you know he commits kufr wazibuhu then i will punish him give him the punishment la wazibu ahadum min al alamin which i will not give to anybody in the earth so that is the consequence if you if the miracle is shown then you know their time is off then up no more respite وما من دابة في الأرض ولا طائر يطير بجناحه إلا أمم أمثالكم. And there is no animal on the earth and no birds which fly with their two wings إلا أمم أمثالكم. They are also communities like you. We know today the community of the ants, you know, and the bee, you know, and everything. All these, these, you know. birds have also community they move and block from north to south these are communities organized communities ma farratna fil kitab min shay we have not omitted anything from the book summa ila rabbihim yushrun and then they will all be gathered towards their lord wal ladina kazabu bi ayatina summun wa bukmun fi zulumat as for those who belay our signs our revelations they are the deaf and the dumb and they are plunged into darknesses of different shades and different depths may yasha illah yudlilhu whom so ever allah pleases he declared him as gone astray wa may yasha yaj'alhu ala asrat mustaqim and whom so ever he pleases he puts him on the right path on the straight path qul araitakum in ataakum adab allah wa atatkum as-saat wa ghayr allah tad'una in kuntum صادقين بل اياه تدعون فيكشف ما تدعون اليه ان شاء وتنسون ما تشركون say to them have you ever seen if the punishment of allah comes or the fixed hour appointed hour comes will you be calling upon any god except allah i told you this was the custom with them بل اياه تدعون when there is some difficult time you call him bal ya hu tad'un fa yakshif ma tad'un ilayh and then you know <clears throat> he saves you from whatever has had come to you and for what you are you are calling him insha if he so pleases wa tansauna ma tushrikun but one thing is sure that at such a time you just forget those whom you associate with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you don't call the lat or the uzza or the manat or the hubul then you call only what does it mean that you call only allah what does it mean in the hearts of your heart you believe in allah only this is only what you are saying you know with your mouth that these are also gods and goddesses barakallahu li wa lakum fi alquran alazim wa nafani wa iyyakum bil ayat wa zikr alhakim allahu akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. 
the obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. One, a Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. Two, a Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three, a Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. Four, a Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.